thank, I want to thank Mirna Santiago and Dr. Maria Maria Luisa, our estudiante. She was one of our students at St. Mary's College. And um, it's really very special to be here tonight. I want to thank you for that wonderful introduction. You did forget a couple of things. <laughs> I was president of my eighth grade class. <laughs> I was president of my eighth grade class for two consecutive years. <laughs> um, you know, I've actually begun to write down some memories of uh, my years of association with the Christian Brothers and my nearly five decades uh, at St. Mary's College. And I've come to realize that the story of those years are really countless stories of remarkable people. Uh, students, faculty, alumni, true heroes, and sheroes. You know, in many ways, the story begins with Odell Johnson, mm -hmm. uh, the son of uh, migrant farm workers, uh, who distinguished himself as a Gale athlete, a student leader, and who returned to become the dean of students at St. Mary's, and St. Mary's first administrator of color. It's the story of five black basketball players who sacrificed their dreams in refusing to play the second half of a basketball game against Santa Clara to protest racism when Odell was fired. And it's the story of Chicano, Black, Asian, and international students who fasted in the chapel and of white students who set up a tent city in the quad to support demands that the college become more inclusive. Uh, it's the story of generations of students of color like Maria Elena Durazo, the daughter of farm workers, a labor leader who now serves as a California state senator, of Dr. Maria Mejorado, who was elected St. Mary's first woman and Latinx student body president, and who continued to inspire generations of students as a professor at Sac State. And it's also the more recent story of Mahershala Ali, a young, high potential student who earned his second Oscar. It's the story of uh, Inez Gomez, of Pisales Perez, of Dr. Maria Hernandez, Dr. Margarita Santos, John Jenis, Lucy Safina, Maureen Little. And it's also the story of our dear hermano, Camilo Chavez. <laughs> College and to me over the 40 plus years that we've known each other. Uh, I think I'll start at the beginning of our relationship, which admittedly was a bit shaky. <laughs> Brother Dominic Ruig had assumed the position of academic vice president, and um, he called me into his office to tell me that uh, Inez Gomez Clark, who was the third assistant dean, uh, was going to be replaced and that he had selected a brother, Camilus Chavez, to serve as the assistant dean. Well, Inez was beloved by a cadre of students, and we were very close colleagues and friends, so I was both surprised and disheartened when Brother Dominic advised me, actually he told me, <laughs> that he was going to ask Brother Camillus to assume the assistant dean's position. Uh, the struggles of the previous years had led to the development of a circle of the wagons mentality. Students and I had a deep suspicion of anyone who had not earned the approval and trust of the college's Chicanx and black students, faculty, and staff. And so, one day, uh, the faculty and staff, the Chicanx faculty, staff, and students directed me to go over to St. Mary's College High School, where Brother, Brother Camilo was living, and that I was specifically being asked to tell them that the Concilio and the Chicanx faculty were opposed to becoming their assistant dean of students. Mm -hmm. 
that I respected and shared their position, and that I was to encourage him not to accept the appointment. Mm. Brother Camilo was not on campus that morning. <laughs> and looking back, it was certainly divine providence that prevented me from meeting him at that time and in those circumstances. You know, I could go on, but suffice it to say, Brother Camilo, as he became known to generations of students, was one of the greatest blessings to be bestowed on St. Louis faculty, alumni, and staff over these past 40 years up to this very day. And that's why all of you are here today, to celebrate Camilo and the role that he's played in your lives. I know for me, he's been one of the most important people in my life. And he was integrally involved in the effectiveness of a wide array of programs and services that supported generations of St. Mary's students, most especially students of color to achieve their visions and dreams, often against all odds. Following her son, you know, Brother Camilo called me uh, last fall, and he said, you know, some faculty have been talking to me, and, and they want to know uh, what role I play in the success of the Office of Advising Services and Special Programs, and I don't think I really played any role. I don't think I made a difference. Well, what I'd like to do is share just three examples of the difference Brother Camilo made. You know, a guiding principle that we consciously sought to instill in black and Chicanx students and later Asia Pacific Islander, international, LGBTQ, and others was the need to come together in association to facilitate what were once called third world struggles and have come to be called movements for equity and social justice. Rather than allowing diverse communities to be played against each other, we endeavored, indeed struggled, to have students recognize their commonalities as opposed to their differences. And our commitment was rooted in a charge from the 1967 Declaration of the Brother in the World Today. And I quote, in their educational activities, the brothers will take care to assist their students to become keenly aware of human suffering. And they will strive to awaken in their students a greater sense of the universal brotherhood and sisterhood among individuals and people. Brother Camilo called it the spirit of la familia. And he supported our staff, our offices, and student organizations to build bridges between and among students and people of different backgrounds. Indeed, Camilo understood, supported, and exemplified the concept of inclusivity long before that term even came to exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Retreats. Yes. Retreats were an integral part. Yes, students are looking around. Retreats were an integral part of the work of St. John Baptist de La Salle who understood the need for his teachers to take time away from their institutions to reflect on their work, reinvigorate and rededicate themselves to be even more effective and loving to their students and to each other. Brother Camilo first organized retreats for students. And I recall accompanying him on several inspirational programs at Del Mar Cottages, north of Guadalajara, at the Brother at the Brothers Retreat House in St. Helena. The sessions were full of serious discussions, heated exchanges, laughter and many tears, and always good food. And the students returned to campus ready to recommit themselves to their academic goals, confront their challenges, and provide support to each other. And Camilo eventually proposed that we organize weekend retreats for our office. And, uh, we rented large homes in Monterey, Carmel, Harlem Dunes. And Camilo made assignments for everything. He planned the agenda. He organized the buying of food and wine. And he determined he would collaborate to cook meals 
And those annual retreats provided powerful planning development and bonding opportunities. When the late Alan Holloway, who was then the chief financial officer, heard that we were requesting funds to make a deposit on a large Monterey vacation home. <laughs> he called to express concern about what likely appeared little more than an expensive and extravagant boondog. <laughs> However, in the years that followed, Allen's was among the many campus departments and programs. He began to regularly convene retreats for faculty, administrators, staff, and for students. Meditation. St. John Baptist La Salle wrote more than 200 meditations that related to the educational work of the brothers. De La Salle believed that it was through meditation that an educator's spiritual life would be deepened and his life and her life's journey made clearer and more actualized. Brother Camilo continues to be the minister of meditation, mm -hmm. the patron saint <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and he introduced the practice of meditation to generations of students, some of whom came to my office initially skeptical to ask about who was that strange guy in his mumbo jumbo. <laughs> However, most came to express their gratitude for the peace that meditation allowed them to experience at St. Mary's and beyond. Mi hermano, mi curandero, un guerrero pacifico. I can say without equivocation that much of what I was able to accomplish at St. Mary's was because of Brother Camilo's always having my back. You know, throughout our relationship, I was often embro embroiled in struggles the lead, to support the least of these, simply put, I was often at war. But Brother Camilo was always at peace. And he supported, encouraged, and challenged me to grow in love and acceptance of myself and others. For many years, I began my mornings sitting in my garden, listening to Brother Camilo's soothing words on a cassette player or a <laughs> CD player. Younger people, you can look that up. <laughs> and it was through meditation that I faced and transcended some of the most significant challenges I encountered at St. Mary's College and beyond. Uh, last September, I posted the following message to Facebook. A call out to former Gales, especially Chicanx, Latinx, Hispanic, Black, Asian, international, and high potential students. I'm asking you to share your thoughts and memories of how Brother Camilo impacted your life at and after St. Mary's. Following are some of the posts that follow. Where do I begin? Brother Camilo has always been one of the kindest and truly, truly inspirational persons that I've ever met. At a time when I was so intense about injustices in our world, he made me stop and love what was around me and basically said it was okay to care for myself as well. He was a true light and has been a loving influence on my life and that of so many youths who have passed his way. Liz Sandoval. Mm -hmm attorney at law and former St. Mary's student. From another student. Who's here right now? Raise your hand, Liz. Liz, Liz. Ben. <laughs> Liz is what we call an MCC, a middle class Chicana. Who, <laughs> <laughs> along with Mireya Caceres, was totally opposed to Brother Camilo coming in as the assistant dean. But who wrapped her in his love, and here she is. From Jesse, but from uh, Jose Varela, who's the chief public defender from Marin County. He taught me to live a life in service to others, but he also taught me to meditate, one of the greatest gifts anyone ever shared with me. From Vivian Biscada, a social worker, 
Brother Camillo recruited me to come to St. Mary's out of Cathedral High School in Los Angeles. He was a powerful presence in my life as a freshman. He taught me how to meditate. He helped to keep us sane since the group of us Loreta Chicanos from Los Angeles were very homesick the first few months after attending. For Pamela George, former director of the St. Mary's Office of Black Student Programs and a former dean at Yale University, Brother Camilo is my medicine man. Working with him through the Office of Academic Advising is memorable. He was the best medicine meditation guide and still is. Each semester, I feature his meditations on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Brother Camilo, in una palabra, wholeness. From Professor Susie Weissman, humanity, integrity, humility, warmth. And from Gus Orlado, where's Gus? He's back there somewhere. <laughs> Gus says, aside from the power of meditation, Brother Camilo taught me to embrace my positive and self-image of being a Latino American, even if that didn't fit with what others assumed it meant to be a Latino. From Lulu, you know, Flores. <laughs> Some of my most treasured memories of St. Mary's are Brother Camilo. He always greeted me with a warm, healing touch, and he was generous with his time and gifts. He helped me to organize an agape preparation, his passion and gift of healing, helping people to feel love and accepted continue to this day. From Frank Knight, the head basketball coach at Moreau High School, Brother Camilo taught me the true meaning of humility during a period in my life when being humble was the last thing on my mind. <laughs> he always had kind words and genuinely cared about what was going on in my life, outside of basketball and in school. Brother Camilo was one of the first people at St. Mary's College who made me feel like I was more, worth more than I thought and was told. He gave life to other people, a perfect example of Lasalle and love. From Dr. Maria Hernandez, the past assistant dean for special programs, Brother Camilo was teaching mindfulness before it was the end thing to do for work, life balance, and well-being. His conversations on authenticity, integrity, and Latinidad truly changed the course of my professional and personal life. Six years later, he officiated at my wedding and helped me start a new chapter of my life. Mil gracias, Brother Camilo, for shining the light for so many of us with your big heart, your wise soul, and your bold dreams. From um, Dorothy Jones. Hey, Dorothy. Hey. I asked Dean of Admissions at St. Mary's, Director of Counseling and College at the Bay School in San Francisco. To know Brother Camilo is a blessing from God. His authentic interest in how I was doing and the countless times he put his hands on me to pray provided me with a grounding and a sense of belonging. In the early, in the nearly 30 years since graduating, Brother continues to provide me with grounding and spiritual support. From Nancy Tobar. Nancy, where are you, Nancy? Nancy says, Brother Camilo was and is my mentor, my friend, my teacher, and most importantly, my spiritual guide. I taught meditation to my students as young as kindergarten, wow. but the work I am most proud of was leading retreats for our students. Those were based on the retreats I attended with Brother. I opened a school for preschool through eighth, eighth grade with uh, three other St. Mary's women, and Brother was our first board member. Mm -hmm. After I graduated, I went on to serve others because of Brother's examples, his encouragement, his belief in me, 
and the unconditional love he showed for me. Henry Adams once wrote, teachers touch eternity. They never know where their influence stops. Brother Camilo, you have been a light in the labyrinth to me and countless others. I'm honored to call you my colleague, my spiritual guide, my curandero, <laughs> my amigo, and most importantly, my very dear brother. Thank you for all you've made.